In our different countries, we all have stories, tales, and legends. This is as true today as it was hundreds of years ago. Focusing our gaze on Iceland, we find the Viking saga of the Volsungs, which tells the story of a legendary family and the mythical hero, Sigurd Dragonkiller. I want to start by thanking all those who like the video, those who don't wait until the video is finished to leave a comment, and those who always contribute new ideas for future videos. Your participation makes today's content possible. In the ancestral lands of the Vikings, long before most legends took shape, a king named Sigi was born. He was no ordinary man. He was the son of Odin himself. Sigi had the strength and cunning worthy of a demigod, but a tragedy befell Sigi. In a moment of rage, he murdered a man. The act, though partly the result of adverse circumstances, led to his banishment from his homeland, cut off from his people and the rich lands he once ruled. However, his divine blood urged him not to give up and, in his exile, he sought refuge in distant lands. There, he founded a new royal line, creating a kingdom that, though new, was destined for greatness. With the passing of generations, a remarkable descendant emerged from Sigi's line, Volsung. Born under a mystical omen, Volsung was said to have sprung from the sacred Yggdrasil tree, the world tree that connects all kingdoms. To commemorate his connection to this tree, Volsung erected a majestic hall around an impressive tree, which was christened the Family Tree, to serve as a constant reminder of his roots and the divinity that ran through his veins. The Volsung kingdom prospered and, in time, had many children. Two of them stood out, a daughter, Signy, whose beauty was rivaled only by her steely spirit, and a son, Sigmund, brave and bold, the bearer of Volsung's hopes and dreams. Fate, however, has curious ways of weaving its threads. Sini was betrothed in marriage to Sigir, a king of neighboring lands. Although this union promised a powerful alliance, Sini's heart was not in the betrothal. Reluctantly, she accepted for the sake of her family and her kingdom. But Sigir's true intentions were soon revealed. Wounded in his pride by what he perceived as slights from Sini's family, he plotted his revenge. At a banquet under the guise of celebrating the Union, he betrayed the Volsungs. Volsung was killed and his sons captured. Sigmund, with the secret help of his sister Sini, managed to escape from the clutches of King Sigir. In the dark shelter of the forest, brother and sister, united by grief and betrayal, plotted how to avenge their family's downfall and restore their honor. As the shadows of the forest listened, the two vowed that vengeance would fall upon Sigir and that the Volsung name would once again be synonymous with honor and power throughout the northern lands. The jungles and mountains sheltered Sigmund during his time of hiding. The memory of betrayal and the loss of his family was a constant companion fueling his spirit. But beyond the betrayal and pain, fate once again had another game for him. One day, as he stood in his father's now desolate living room, he saw something unusual. A sword, magnificently forged and gleaming even in the gloom of the hall, was nailed to the trunk of the family tree. The tree that once symbolized the glory and legacy of the Volsungs now appeared to be a tomb, but the sword was a promise of hope. Legend has it that no man, no matter how strong, had ever been able to move the sword one iota. There were rumors, whispers, that spread like the wind through the forest, that said that the sword had been thrust by Odin himself, the father of all, and that only the true heir of the Volsungs would be able to extract it. Defying the legend and with the weight of his destiny upon him, Sigmund approached the tree. With a firm grip and with all the strength and determination of his lineage, he made an attempt to extract the sword. With a resounding sound that resembled a victory song, the sword yielded to his touch and broke free from the trunk, glowing with an almost divine light. This sword became not only Sigmund's most prized weapon, but also a symbol of Volsung lineage and endurance. With it in hand, he was ready to face any adversity and reclaim what had been taken from him. 
Sigmund's epic was far from over, and the sword would be a witness and companion to his future triumphs and tragedies. But at that moment, in his father's parlor, Sigmund extracted not only a weapon, but also a legacy and a destiny that would resonate through the Aegis. After retrieving the sword, Sigmund sought to re-establish his legacy. He traveled the lands, fighting those who stood in his way and restoring the greatness of the Volsungs. Though blessed with strength and cunning, he could not forever escape the tragic fate that often befalls the heroes of Norse legends. During one of his many confrontations, Sigmund found himself fighting a masked adversary of supernatural abilities. When their swords clashed, Sigmund's sword shattered into pieces, and he knew at that moment that his opponent was none other than Odin, who had come to reclaim the life he had once favored. Mortally wounded, Sigmund was carried from the battlefield by his wife, who was expecting a child. In his last moments, Sigmund spoke to his wife about the future, predicting that their son would be even greater than himself and that he should name him Sigurd. He gave her the fragments of the sword and asked her to give them to his son when he grew up, so that the sword could be reforged and used to fulfill his destiny. After Sigmund's death, Hiordis, his pregnant wife, was found and rescued by King Alf, who took her into his kingdom. There, in the safety of the royal palace, Sigurd was born. But the young boy was not raised in the comfort of the court, but by Regan, an enigmatic blacksmith with a dark past and secrets he jealously hid. Regan, the blacksmith who educated Sigurd, was not only a master blacksmith, but also a skilled storyteller. One night, in the warmth of the forge flames, Regan shared with Sigurd the story of his family, a tale as dark as the shadows that danced on the walls of the workshop. Long ago, Regan's father, Hreidmar, was a powerful sorcerer who possessed a treasure coveted by many, the gold of the Anvari dwarf. This gold was obtained treacherously when the god Loki, seeking to reward Hreidmar for a mistake, stole the treasure from the Anvari dwarf, including a magic ring called Anvaranaut. Little did Loki know that, in stealing the ring, he also took a curse. Andvari had cursed the gold, claiming that it would bring misfortune to whoever possessed it. Bridemar, upon receiving the cursed treasure, was seduced by its radiance and by the power of the ring. However, the curse soon manifested itself. Fafnir and Regan, brothers and sons of Hridmar, also coveted the treasure. In an act of treachery and greed, Fafnir murdered his own father to claim the gold. But in doing so, the curse hit him harder. Greed consumed Fafnir to such an extent that, fearing that others might steal from him, he transformed himself into a terrible dragon to guard the treasure day and night. Regan, on the other hand, escaped his brother's fate, but was consumed by the desire for revenge and the ambition to claim the treasure for himself. However, he knew he could not confront Fafnir directly. Therefore, when Sigurd came into his life, he saw in him the perfect opportunity to retrieve the Andvari gold and the cursed ring. Sigurd, brave and with his family's legacy in mind, accepted the challenge. With his father's sword, which Regan reforged after it broke in combat, Sigurd faced and defeated the monstrous Fafnir in an epic fight. After the battle, following Regan's advice, Sigurd bathed his body in the dragon's blood, which gave him an almost invulnerable skin, except for a small spot on his back where a linden leaf had landed. But the most extraordinary thing happened when, also following a tip, Sigurd tasted the dragon's heart. In doing so, he acquired the ability to understand the language of birds. The birds, with their high-pitched crackling voices, warned Sigurd of the impending treachery of Regan, who planned to kill him in order to keep all the treasure for himself. With his new skills and wisdom, Sigurd prevented the treachery and killed Regan. With Fafnir's treasure and new adventures ahead, Sigurd, the dragon slayer, continued his journey, leaving behind the shadow of the dragon, but carrying with him a destiny that still had many challenges to offer. In his travels, Sigurd heard rumors of a beautiful maiden trapped in an eternal sleep, surrounded by a flaming wall. With his characteristic courage and guided by fate, he found the lonely mountain where Brunhild lay sleeping. Brunhild, who had once been a Valkyrie in Odin's service, had disobeyed the god and was punished for it. 
With determination, Sigurd pierced the ring of fire and woke Brunhild with a kiss. Upon awakening, their eyes met, and an immediate connection was established between them. They shared stories, laughter, and deep gazes, and in that brief span of time, they both fell madly in love. Promising to meet again and consummate their love, Sigurd left the mountain, where Brunhild was imprisoned, to continue their adventures and prepare for a future together. However, upon returning to the mortal world, he encountered the cunning Grimhild, mother of Gudrun, a powerful and manipulative woman with great magical abilities. Seeing in Sigurd a perfect son-in-law for her daughter Gudrun, Grimhild hatched a plan. Using an enchanted drink, she made Sigurd forget all memories of his love for Brunhild. Under the influence of this spell, Sigurd not only forgot Brunhild, but was irresistibly attracted to Gudrun. Shortly thereafter, the two were married, while Brunhild awaited the return of her beloved. For her part, Brunhild, unaware of the machinations that affected Sigurd, was persuaded to marry Gunnar, Gudrun's brother. Despite Gunnar's bravery, he could not break through the ring of fire that protected Brunhild. So, in a turn of events, he turned to Sigurd. Through a magical ruse, Sigurd took on the guise of Gunnar, pierced the ring of fire and claimed Brunhild in his name. As time passed, dark secrets began to unravel. Upon discovering the truth behind the deception, Brunhild was flooded with a storm of emotions, anger, betrayal and pain. The pure and genuine love she once felt for Sigurd was overshadowed by feelings of revenge and deeply wounded pride. In this climate of intrigue and tension, Brunhild hatched a plan to have Sigurd killed, an action that was executed by Gunnar and his other brother, Hogni. With Sigurd dead, Brunhild's grief was overwhelming. Despite her anger and previous actions, the love she harbored for Sigurd had never disappeared. Consumed by guilt and agony, Brunhild, in a final act of love and remorse, decided to join Sigurd in death, taking her own life with a sword. Thus, two lovers, separated by deceit and betrayal, but united in death, found eternal rest. Gudrun's heart was torn apart by the death of her husband Sigurd. Her soul was plunged into an abyss of grief and thirst for revenge. Although Sigurd had been betrayed by her own family, Gudrun could not forget her love for him, and her rage was directed at those she held responsible for his tragic death. In an act of cold and calculated revenge, Gudrun killed the children with Gunnar as punishment for her family's role in Sigurd's death. In a macabre and grim manner, she constructed a goblet from the skulls of her sons and filled it with their blood mixed with mead. Then, at a sinister banquet, he presented the cup to Gunnar and Hogni, making them drink from it, later revealing the truth of its contents. The horror of the revelation unleashed a spiral of revenge and violence in the court. Tensions that had been simmering for years finally erupted into a frenzy of betrayal and murder. Hogni was murdered in retaliation, and Gunnar, filled with rage and guilt, met his fatal fate at the hands of Atli, Gudrun's second husband and Brunhild's brother, who threw him into a pit full of snakes. With her life in ruins and her soul consumed by grief and revenge, Gudrun could no longer bear the reality around her. Seeking an end to her torment, she walked to the shore. There, gazing at the waves of the sea, she thought of Sigurd and the happier times they shared. With one last look at the world she was leaving behind, Gudrun stepped into the water, letting the waves envelop her and take her into the depths, seeking to join Sigurd in the afterlife or simply find peace in the silence of the abyss. Remember that this video comes out thanks to your comments and suggesting me topics, so don't be shy and join this community contributing ideas. I would also love to know what you thought of this content and if you want more stories like this or if you prefer me to focus more on mythologies from other regions.